Hi guys, hope you're doing well. One of the first things I do when I find a decent location is I look around, check out all the trees, make sure there's no danger, snapped branches or trunks that are leaning over and maybe a danger in high winds. I also check out the canopy for any deadfall and that's any branches that may have caught between other branches and again could fall and damage your tarp or even worse cause some sort of injury. The last thing you want is your noggin to stop reporting back to you. So all things being square, I'm happy with my location. So I'll just walk out 10 paces from one tree to the next tree that I've chosen. And that will usually give me enough space to uh, hang a bed and also the shelter. For easy access, I like to keep the tarp in the hood of the bag um, or external to the bag just in case the uh, weather decides to change um, and you can smell rain in the air. When switched on, I'll leave a few bundles of 550 paracord, usually 10 meter lengths in the top of my tarp bag. During my last camp, my good friend Mickey was uh, with us and we got caught by surprise. The heavens opened and having these things handy and easy to access just makes the world a difference and prevents you from uh, getting absolutely soaked. So I'm just tying a bowline knot, make sure that's nice and tight. I'll place that up to the tree, just above head height, and uh, wrap it round the tree, placing the 550 paracord in the loop of the bowline knot, and then placing the piece of wood or toggle. Once that's nice and tight, I pull the line across to the tree and again at a similar height um, I wrap it round twice coming back on myself on the first time and uh, then I'll tie it using a taut line hitch that's over the tag end then through the middle and over through the middle one more time then over and then we're coming back on ourselves and over the ridge line and pull it tight. You can do that again just to secure it and then just tidy up any excess cordage. And if you need to, just burn off any of the frayed ends so it's all nice and solid. <laughs> all being well, your ridge line's nice and taut. How you build your shelter depends on a few key variables. One being the weather, another one might be your particular style and preference, and also if you're with company because you don't want to be antisocial. So I might do an A-frame, or being a bit more sociable I might do a lean-to, but today I'm going to do the diamond configuration. I'm going to use this bank line, so one, two, to make two loops and uh, those loops we can make prussic knots with and then the prussic knots will help hold the toggles in. This is one way of securing the tarp so that each end of the tarp stays in situ. Do an overhand knot. That'll be uh, suffice. Same on the other side. On the other one, should I say? Overhand knot. That's your two loops that you can make your Prusik knots with to hold toggles in place, which again holds the tarp in place. I 
All I'm doing here is just taking the uh, rough edge off so it doesn't damage the tarp. That's one toggle made. Need to make another one for the other side. Two toggles. So some of you guys have seen seen me do this before, but this is for all the uh, new subscribers who've never seen a Prusik knot. So you just go through once, twice, three times. Charm. We place our the corner of the tarp that we want. I'll wrap that around twice. A double measure, basically. So once that's in place, it's secure. What we've done here, let's do that on the other side. What I do is I just hold on to the knot once, twice, three times. This, so it's all nice and neat. Then pull it tight. All nice and secure. So just going to bring that to a bit of a spike and then place it in the ground. Don't need to go crazy with it. So I place the peg in like so, over and under, over and under. And back on yourself, and then through, form a little bit of a loop. Yeah. And what you can do is loosen it or tighten it up if you need to. There you go. So guys, we've got the other side tied down. This one, again, once you put your hammock underneath, I can pin this down here if I wish to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it across the way. Um, there's uh, a nice tree, a uh, sycamore tree, just growing right in front of me. So I'm going to put that across. So I've got a bit of a, a bit of a roof and it opens it out a little bit. And then I can put my hammock in and uh, happy days, all's good. Yeah, so on my last video guys, what I did was uh, the hammock was higher on one side than the other. So if you end up sliding down your hammock, spend all night trying to pull yourself up and trying to get comfy and so forth. So I'm going to try and get things right. So I'm going to do them at the same level. I'm going to do it nice and tall and then we'll just take it from there. And hopefully I can do what you would usually do in a hammock then and that is you move to the side of the hammock, whichever is your preferred side. So your head's on one side, your legs are on the other, and then you get more of a flat sort of like surface to lie on. So I've got a new sleeping bag. I've also got a new mat. Nighttime, the uh, temperature drops and you feel a cold on your back. And if, if you're like me, if I feel any cold on my back, I just can't sleep, can't get my head down. So, so yeah, we're gonna rectify that today in this uh, uh, sleepover and take you through it as I get it done. feel what it's like. That's not too bad.
Yeah, and it's fairly, uh, that's fairly level that. That's fairly level. So yeah, we'll take it from there, I think. So I'm going to use some more Prusik knots to tie the top of my bug net up to the uh, ridge line. DD usually supply shock cord, so you can uh, tie the shock cord to your bug net and then uh, tie the other end up to your ridge line. It gives you a bit of bounce and a bit of play. But uh, I've misplaced the shock cord, haven't I? So I've got to improvise. So you don't have to tie it too tight because the Prusik knot is going to do the work for you once you've tightened it. So you can adjust it, you see. So next I'm just going to attach the um, these babies. And for that, in the front line, DD hammock, there's a little, like a buttonhole there. You just press, press it into the buttonhole and then feed it through. It's a bit of a fiddly, bit of a fiddly job. This just spreads it out for you. So you've got more head space and your head isn't bouncing off the, uh, off the netting in the middle of the night. On the newer Frontier DD hammocks, you get three of these, so it's wider, gives you more space. There you go. There you go, guys. That's it. We've got the finished product there. Enough space all around. And if you do need to adjust, you can do. If you want to adjust it through the night, then good luck with that. One doesn't want to usually adjust anything through the night. Let's just see. Wonder here. This is where I'm going to put my uh, mat. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, happy days. One should remember to take one's knife off one's belt before one gets in. Luckily enough, I've got it on the side here, so it's not digging into the uh, mm -hmm. digging into the hammock. Yeah, happy with that. Glad you can wait. So, do you remember me mentioning to you that um, in the last uh, episode, I had a cold back? Well, um, with your support, I've managed to buy a new sleeping bag. And um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to test it out tonight. Um, it's a three season uh, sleeping bag. Um, nice and light and compact. Weighs uh, 1.38 kilograms. So it's not the lightest, but this is, uh, this is well appreciated. A three season sleeping bag will do me. I've got a, an Arctic sleeping bag. Uh, as you know, that I use in uh, in really cold sub-zero temperatures. This one's uh, this will go down to um, minus uh, 14 um, Celsius, so it's pretty good, 
pretty good for the size of it. I mean, my Arctic sleeping bag's about ye big and uh, a wee bit fatter as well. So I'm going to get this out now, uh, but I just want to say thanks to uh, you guys who've donated. Um, really appreciate it. I managed to get this, by the way. I also got a inflatable as well, and I'll show that later on. But this, I'm going to get this out now, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I've already opened it up when I uh, when uh, I was at home, and uh, so I like, tested it out. And my daughter as well; she she got inside uh, to test it out. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a cracker. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys um, donating. Uh, yeah all goes to good use and uh, this one fairly cheap really uh, I think it cost me about 70 pounds I know that's still quite a lot of money but for something of this quality it's uh, it's a it's a bit of a bargain so thanks guys yeah really appreciate it it's in there nice and snug and we have here a side pocket in the hammock and just place it in there jobs are good one. So both this and the sleeping bag are both ripstop. Um, I need ripstop basically because one, we've got um, a little doggy. Can you see me there? Uh, we've got a little doggy that uh, likes to uh, sleep inside the sleeping bag with me. Keeps her nice and warm, uh, but she has got claws. So uh, ripstop, it's, if you get a little hole in it or something like that, it stays within the confines of the actual stitch itself so it makes it a lot more durable slightly translucent I don't know if you can see there maybe you can't but um, this diamond configuration here all the air is going to go in between that and that will give me the cushioning that I need that extra layer on my back so nice and uh, light and compact so let's get it in so this is a Berghaus uh, self-inflating mat and it weighs 650 grams it's a nylon ripstop material the actual depth is about 30 millimeters the width of it is 51 centimeters fits in nice and snug and the overall length is 183 centimeters so it's a a decent length I'm uh, six foot one so that should be okay for me so I'll let you know how it goes guys we've got um, inside we've got these two elasticated rings they're to secure once you've deflated it and then I've got a repair kit as well that comes with it just in case there's any uh, mi mishaps so happy days and again the bag compresses right down and that'll go in one of the side pockets so there you go guys I hope you enjoyed this simple demonstration on how to set up your diamond shaped tarp with your hammock I also talked about safety speed convenience and practicality if you like this video please like and subscribe press the bell and consider supporting the channel thanks again and I'll see you on the next Hope Finn Bushcraft Thank mm -hmm. you.